Hello, beloved. Welcome to a new week of daily prayer. Today is Monday of the second week of Easter, April 25th, 2022. Have you heard the saying, you can never go home? Jesus encountered the reality of that when he preached his first sermon in Nazareth. We'll hear about that today in our reading from Luke chapter 4. Let's begin with our opening versicle. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall declare your praise. Make haste, O God, to deliver me. Make haste to help me, O Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Hallelujah. Our psalm for the week is Psalm 148. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise Him in the heights. Praise Him, all His angels. Praise Him, all His hosts. Praise Him, sun and moon. Praise Him, all you shining stars. Praise Him, you highest heavens, and you waters above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord. For He commanded, and they were created. And He established them forever and ever. He gave a decree, and it shall not pass away. Praise the Lord from the earth, you great sea creatures and all deeps, fire and hail, snow and mist, stormy wind fulfilling his word, mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars, beasts and all livestock, creeping things and flying birds, kings of the earth and all peoples, princes and all rulers of the earth, young men and maidens together, old men and children. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is exalted. His majesty is above earth and heaven. He has raised up a horn for his people. Praise for all his saints, for the people of Israel who are near to him. Praise the Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our hymn for the week is hymn number 471 from Lutheran Service Book, O Sons and Daughters of the King. Today we sing stanzas one through four. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. O sons and daughters of the King, whom heavenly hosts in glory sing, today the grave has lost its sting. Alleluia! That Easter morn at break of day, the faithful women went their way to seek the tomb where Jesus lay. Alleluia! An angel clad in white they see, who sits and speaks unto the three, your Lord will go to Galilee. Alleluia! That night the apostles met in fear, among them came their master dear, and said, My peace be with you here. Alleluia! Today's reading is from the Gospel according to St. Luke, the fourth chapter, beginning at verse 16. And he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, and as was his custom, he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day, and he stood up to read. And the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to him. He unrolled the scroll and found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to the captives, 
and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And he rolled up the scroll and gave it back to the attendant and sat down. And the eyes of all in the synagogue were fixed on him. And he began to say to them, Today this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. And all spoke well of him and marveled at the gracious words that were coming from his mouth. And they said, Is not this Joseph's son? And he said to them, Doubtless you will quote to me this proverb, Physician, heal yourself. What we have heard you did at Capernaum, do here in your hometown as well. And he said, Truly I say to you, no prophet is acceptable in his hometown. But in truth, I tell you, there were many widows in Israel in the days of Elijah, when the heavens were shut up three years and six months, and a great famine came over all the land. And Elijah was sent to none of them, but only to Zarephath in the land of Sidon to a woman who was a widow. And there were many lepers in Israel in the time of the prophet Elisha, and none of them were cleansed, but only Naaman the Syrian. When they heard these things, all in the synagogue were filled with wrath, and they rose up and drove him out of the town, and brought him to the brow of the hill on which their town was built, so that they could throw him down the cliff. But passing through their midst, he went away. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, O Christ. Join me now as we continue with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he has visited and redeemed his people, and has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David, as he spoke by the mouth of his holy prophets, who have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us, to perform the mercy promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant, the oath which he swore to our father Abraham, to grant us that we, being delivered from the hand of our enemies, might serve him without fear, in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, grant that we who have celebrated the Lord's resurrection may by your grace confess in our life and conversation that Jesus is Lord and God. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Today the Holy Church celebrates the festival of St. Mark, evangelist, author of the second gospel, and companion of Saints Peter and Paul. We read from Celebrating the Saints by William Whedon. John Mark was cousin to the Apostle Barnabas. His mother's home in Jerusalem was a meeting place for the early church. 
The weak by grace made strong in the hymn stanza refers to the famous incident recorded in Acts 15. Though John Mark had begun the first missionary journey with Paul and Barnabas, he did not finish it. We're not told exactly why he returned, but it was clearly without Paul's blessing. Barnabas, the true son of encouragement, was all for giving the young man a second chance when he and Paul determined to begin a second journey. Paul adamantly refused. The disagreement became so sharp that they ended up splitting ways. Paul took Silas and went to Asia Minor. Barnabas took Mark and went to Cyprus. If that were the end of the story, it would be sad indeed. What a comfort, then, to read in St. Paul's final letter, 2 Timothy 4, verse 11, Luke alone is with me. Get Mark and bring him with you, for he is very useful to me for ministry. Though a veil of silence remains over the details of how it happened, the two were reconciled before Paul's death, and the church's ministry strengthened all the more. Additionally, Peter, writing from Rome, would say, She who is at Babylon, codename for Rome, as in Revelation, who is likewise chosen, sends you greetings, and so does Mark, my son. Thus Mark ministered not only with the apostles Barnabas and Paul, but with Peter too. Very early and nearly unanimous tradition states that Mark's gospel itself is actually a summary of the account of our Lord's life that Mark learned from Peter before the apostles' martyrdom in Rome. Scholars have pointed out that Peter's sermon in Acts 10, 34-43 provides a strikingly precise outline of Mark's gospel. Mark's is the shortest of the four canonical gospels and the fastest paced, immediately, is its watchword. It provides a beautiful picture of Christ as the conquering king who battles and drives out the enemies of the human race, the demons, just as Joshua drove out the inhabitants of Canaan, a battle that culminates at the cross. The symbol associated with St. Mark is the lion, king of the beasts. Mark's gospel contains some teaching sections from our Lord, but it is overwhelmingly a fast-paced action account right up to the disproportionately long narrative of the Lord's Passion. In fact, it has been called a Passion narrative with a preface. Mark is said to have finished his service to Christ by serving as bishop in the great city of Alexandria in Egypt, ultimately dying there a martyr's death. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have enriched your church with the proclamation of the gospel through the evangelist Mark. Grant that we may firmly believe these glad tidings and daily walk according to your word. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We conclude again today with Luther's morning prayer. Let us pray. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul, and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. O Lord, hear my prayer, and let my cry come before you. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, order our days and our deeds in his peace. Amen. God bless your day, beloved.